Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review today. I'm here to talk to you guys about a brand new record from Premier, Wings of Fire, out March 8th. This album has 11 tracks, 47 minutes in length, and this is the band's third full-length album. Now, for those of you that checked out the singles that came out from this record, and you're still wondering what the direction of this album is going to be, I mean, wonder no more. This is a symphonic death metal album through and through, from the first song to the last song. If you were expecting something else, and, and you had hopes for something else, well, perhaps you're gonna be disappointed. But if you really paid attention to those singles and you enjoyed those singles, you kind of had an idea where this album was going to go. And this album went down that road. This is a symphonic death metal album that does not fall into a lot of the same problems that a lot of bands under this genre tend to fall in, which is to create an album that sounds extremely good, sounds cinematic, it sounds theatrical, but it also sounds repetitive. That was my main concern going in. I was really hoping to have some dynamic uh, within the record that allowed them to use the same elements over and over again, but not in the same fashion, not in the same structure, not in the same way, because I wanted the album to feel different from track to track, even though you're getting some of the same elements. So from that perspective, my expectations were met because this album does not have two songs that sound the same. This album is very dynamic, is very fluid, is very aggressive. It really merges the symphonic death metal side with even a little bit of power metal. There are some power metal bass riffs on this record that really give the songs a lot of momentum. They give the songs a high octane tempo, if you will. So from song to song, the album is very diverse, is very different. Obviously, they're using a lot of the same elements like choirs, symphonic elements in general, orchestras. All of these things are being thrown at you track after track, but in a different way, with a different approach, in a different style, in a different structure. The way the songs are created, they're very unique and different from each other. So I don't mind that the same elements are present throughout the record. That's to be expected. What I was really looking forward to is how they were going to change them, at least change them enough to give the songs its own identity, its own DNA. They were able to do that. This album is very energetic. And like I said, it really merges a little bit of power metal with symphonic death metal. These two worlds are constantly colliding throughout the record. Sometimes you feel that on the drum side, sometimes you feel that more on the guitar side, and even sometimes on the keyboard. It really depends on which song you're listening to. You're going to get a different look, a different approach to how they put that song together. And on that approach, it's going to have a different influence. So some of them are pure symphonic death metal songs. Some of them have a little bit more of a death metal tendency to it. And then some have a very good spinal cord of power metal. So what this does is, like I said, it creates an album that's very fluid in nature, that really changes from song to song and really doesn't allow the listener to get uh, stuck in a position where every single track starts to feel like the same track over and over again. And you can't tell the difference between track one and track 10 because they all just sound like the exact the same thing. That's not the case. They really put out a really good record with a lot of really cool elements and a lot of cool dynamics in it. As far as those elements and dynamics, to me, there are four key elements, if you will, or key components that really uh, make the difference as far as this record is concerned. Symphonic elements, guitars, drums, and vocals. To me, these four elements are really the core, the spinal cord of how this album is put together. As far as the symphonic elements are concerned, I really like how they sound on this record. Larger than life, really cinematic, theatrical at times. It really gives the songs a much larger scale. It makes the song feel a lot bigger. It gives the song volume. It gives the song melody. It gives the song direction. It sets the tempo sometimes. It really creates a roller coaster and even sometimes an avalanche of sound coming at you from those symphonic elements. I like how they use the choirs, how they were used in different tracks in different ways really set the difference as far as I'm concerned. I was really hoping that they were not gonna go with one formula as far as choirs are concerned, and they didn't. They really use them well. They use them sometimes more in the forefront to really set the tone, either be in a chorus or doing your verses, or in some cases more in the background to add layers to the vocal track, to really add volume, to add darkness, and sometimes even to add a little bit of heaviness to the song. On the guitar side, this album is absolutely incredible. What a delight to sit down and listen to an album that has this wide range 
of guitar sound to it, either it be the melodies, the riffs, and the solos, there really, there really is a wide range. Some songs, depending on what the demand or the style of the song was, you got your, your run-of-the-mill melodic death metal heavy guitar riff. In some cases, they went more with a power metal bass riff. And then in some cases, you have even a little bit that old school, new wave of British heavy metal sound to the way the guitars were put together on this record. So you really have all these different worlds and they had a lot to pull from in order to create a very diverse, unique and melodic guitar sound on this record. As far as the drums are concerned, I really like what they did with the drums as well because they alternated the more heavier death metal oriented uh, kind of drum track with a more power metal bass drum track. Really, once again, it really depends on what the song called for, or what the lyrics of the song were, the whole dynamic of the song, where the song was going, and they changed the drums depending on what the song called for. They didn't get stuck with one specific drum track style throughout the record, they really alternated it based on what the song called for. A lot of the times, the drums on the tracks really give the song its momentum. It really feels like the drums are setting the tempo for how the song is going to go. Last but not least, the vocals. This to me is perhaps the only small negative of the record. I really hope or I, I would like the vocal track on this record to be a little bit higher. I felt like it was recorded slightly lower and in some cases it almost gets overshadowed by all the symphonic elements around it or by the fires that are coming over the top. So I, I almost feel uh, that this is perhaps the only slight negative that this album has is that I really feel that the vocal track was recorded uh, just slightly too lower. That's about it. Besides that, I really like what they did with the vocals. I like the vocal style. I like the delivery. I like the, the tempo that it sets for the songs. I like the mood that it creates. It, the, the vocals on this record really add a lot of atmosphere, either be it straight from the vocalist or how they were used as far as the choirs are concerned. And even in certain tracks, they used almost a narrator, like spoken word, which gave a, a little bit of, of a dark, ominous vibe to those tracks. So I really like what they did vocally as far as, as the range and how the vocals were used in general. I just wished that they were recorded slightly higher. I feel in some tracks they get a little bit overshadowed and that's a shame because they're really good vocals. Now, as far as favorite songs are concerned, I have to start with Gloria and Regum. That's the first song on the album. My God, this song, this song is theatrical. It's cinematic. It's Game of Thrones kind of intro track to a record. This song comes at you with such blistering speed and heaviness of drums, guitars, keyboards, symphonic elements. This is like rapid fire musically coming at you in the first song of the record. What a way to get the album started. I don't think they could have picked a more dynamic, a more robust song to start off the album. Also a song that really includes all the elements that you're gonna find throughout the record. This one is really the song that really encompasses the whole dynamic of the record and how this album sounds like. I absolutely love this song. The moment you start listening to this song, immediately you have to sit back and you cannot stop the record. It's just, it's a free train. It's, it's going and you cannot stop it. This song immediately catches your attention, has you hooked to the album. I love what they did with the choir uh, vocal track. It plays a huge part of the song. It plays a huge part of the symphonic element of the song. It really adds to that cinematic vibe that the song has. It really gives the song a lot of volume. It gives the song a sense of, of being really big and large. And I really like that. And it, they really used it well. They really used it sporadically throughout, but always in the chorus. You always get that chorus coming in with that choir that just adds a lot of volume. It really adds something different to the song and it adds the sense of being you being in front of a big screen. This song also has a magnificent solo. It has a the solo has a little bit of a throwback vibe to it. I felt like it had a, a really late 80s, early 90s, a new wave of uh, British heavy metal sound to it, almost a little bit power metal-ish, if you will. But I really like that because this song is big. This song has volume. This song has everything. And one of the things that it has is a lot of power metal elements to it. So for them to put a solo like this on this track, to me, made absolutely total sense. And it really worked well for this song. Next one on the list is Hails From The Edge. I really like this track as well. The keyboard melody that gets the song started really has an, an 80s retro vibe to it. And that keyboard melody kind of stays out throughout the song. It changes, the, the melody itself changes, 
but the 80s vibe to how the keyboard comes across never changes throughout this whole song. To me, that's one of the consistent. While they change the melody, they never really change the style, the structure, and the feel, the overall vibe that the keyboards really give to this song. The guitar riff is blistering and melodic at the same time. Another song that just doesn't stop, that just has a great tempo, great momentum, and it almost has a power metal tempo to it. It almost feels like you're listening to a slight heavier power metal song, if you will. I really like this track. Last but not least, a new. I have to put this on my top three songs. It would be impossible for me to do an album review and the album has a song that features Nora from Battle Beast and I don't pick that song as one of my favorite three. What would be wrong with me to do such a thing? So this song, Anu, is the last track on the album. It features Nora from Battle Beast. Absolutely mesmerizing track, very different. Uh, almost the complete opposite of the first track, Glory and Regum. Glory and Regum starts the album off just in blistering fashion. Like it just comes at you and it's just heavy and fast and melodic. And this one finishes the record on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Very slow, very methodic, very dark, very melancholic almost. They use spoken word in this track in between Nora's vocals. So the spoken word comes in, then she comes in with an absolute amazing vocal performance. It absolutely blew my mind. Very dark, a, a, a different side of her, a, a different approach to her vocal performance that I really was taken back on this track because it's very haunting, it's very dark. And then when you add that spoken word before, like it's before and after, Every, her voice is kind of sandwiched in that spoken word that they added to this song. So when you have her performance, which is very haunting, very dark, with that spoken word, with a song that has a lot of melody, but it's a very dark, embracing melody. You have a very slower song, a much different song, a much different approach, and perhaps the best way to close off a record that has absolutely blistering tempos and blistering speed to it. It almost pumps the brakes as it gets to the end of the record. So I really like that dynamic. I like how they started the record with, with a much different song and then how they ended with a song that's on the complete opposite side of the spectrum. Really well put together album. I really enjoy this record. This is perhaps one of the better or perhaps one of the best, let me say, symphonic death metal albums that you will hear this year. Really well put together. The sound is really crisp. Like I said, I just wish the vocals were a little bit higher. I just feel like sometimes they get a little bit overshadowed. But overall, what a great album. What a great listening experience. What a great record. 11 incredible tracks, all of them different from each other. And when you have Nora as a guest vocalist on one of your tracks, you can never go wrong. She just adds a whole new dimension to this album and to that specific song. Absolutely amazing. I really enjoyed it. Now I want to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts on Premier Wings of Fire? Let me know your thoughts on the singles that came out. The comment section below is there for you. Leave your comments there. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.